Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much, have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trayvon's RV Center. Here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Palomino Sabre 34REQS-6. Huge fifth wheel. You guys have picked a beautiful unit. I'm gonna walk you around it, show you how to use a few things. Get the best out of your camping experience. First off, talk about arriving at the campsite, your slides. You got this big slide over on your campsite. And then you got your three slides over here on your off camp side. Now you do have uh, awning covers on all of them, or uh, slide covers on all of them, but I still recommend not having anything hanging directly over top of them, unless you have to take off from them. Um, so better. Make sure you got room for them to come in and out nice. City water connection is gonna be on your off camp side. Your whole uh, docking station is. And then your power is gonna be at the back on your off camp side. So park accordingly so that you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Of course, the hitch band is going to go over unhooking your hitch. I'll show you where your front stabilizing bars are. Here's your controls right here. Extend and retract. You also have a little docking light on the end. Do you have a level up here? This is just access to the storage. You have the strong arm bars on these. Get your unit level. Once you got a level, you're gonna go ahead and come to the back and we're gonna stabilize the back. Do you have power stabilizing jacks on these? I do recommend grabbing a couple pads. Uh, grab them out of our store, put them down on the ground, hit extend, run these down just so they're taut with the stabilizing pads. Stabilizing pads are going to protect the feet of the stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, uh, hot tar, black top. You see sometimes one side will come down first, and the other side will start inching down. Be okay if they don't come down at the same time. Anyway, you only want to run these down to the top. Remember, they're not stabilizing jacks, they're leveling jacks. You already got your uh, you are not leveling jacks, they're stabilizing jacks. You've already got your unit level by using the front tongue. You need this to stabilize the unit. You don't want to lift the unit at all. You don't want to bring them down until they're taut. I'm going to run this one down so you can see. Let's put a fold right down for you. And there's where you want to stop. You don't want to change the levelness of the unit at all. You might even want to go back and look and see if you went too far. Maybe retract a, a fraction and lower a quarter of an inch. But get you nice and level. Once you've got them down, go ahead and hook up our power and, electric and water. You have 50 amp service here. At the end of that 50 amp service, you'll have a dog bone. That'll bring you 50 down to 30. And then you'll have a uh, 30 amp down to 110 in your convenience pack as well. You need to plug into that. You know not to run too much on 110 in a big trailer like this. Got our power hooked up. Let's go ahead and come up here and hook our water up. First and foremost, always use this water pressure regulator. You don't know what different parts water pressure is set at. This will reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this. Pretty simple set up here. Open up, hook up your city water connection. Before hooking, uh, turning on your hose, come right here to your hot water heater. 
open this up all we're doing at this point is just remembering to put the drain plug back in you may have left it out from last time you were camping so go ahead and put that back in nice and tight then you can go ahead and turn on your hose once your hose has been running for a little while you're going to go ahead and pull on this pressure release valve you're going to burp the air out of the lines is what they call it until you get a nice steady flow of water coming out of here then you know that your hot water heater is full and you can turn it on from indoors now you'll notice there is an on off switch down here on the bottom by this electric element it says only turn on your hot water heater um, down here if you're using 110 any other time you want to go ahead and use it turn it on indoors also if a hot water heater doesn't seem to be working come out and look at these two spots here bubble may be out it's a it's a reset you push it back in it'll reset your hot water heater to get working for you again other notes on there got our water hooked up city what if we're gonna go potable water right next door to it fresh water connection you can use just a hose through here because it's non-pressurized water go ahead and fill that up this is an overflow so it's coming out of there you know you're full or you can actually go to the inside and where you check your tank levels you can just keep an eye on the fresh water tank and see when it gets a little bit over three quarter and then just keep an eye on it and fill it from there. Remember, whenever you're using your potable water is when you're going to want to turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump and use a city water connection. All right, that about covers hooking up. Let me walk you around the rest of the unit here. This is a little docking station with a light outside. Drive at night. Got a 110 out here. Bypass valve for winterizing and hot water heater bypass. Cable and satellite hookups. Antifreeze in light for when you winterize. Black tank flush for when leaving the campsite. I saw a hose here and then a hole to run your hoses down through. Your power cord, before I head back, stores on this uh, storage piece here. I'll show you when we put it away. But it's all the way at the back there that we went through. Big storage area. You see they left you with a nice tarp. Nice cover for the unit. Propane here. Again, this is your hot water heater. This is your furnace heat release. If you uh, are running your furnace to clear this, it'll get rather warm. Down here is going to be our sewer and gray take outlet. Fresh water dumps, low point drains. Black, black tanks and gray tank. Hood for the back of your microwave. These are access back to the back of your fridge. In between your slides here. That is a hole for manual crank for your slides. Show you that side on the other side again, your stabilizing jacks. A nice little cargo rack on this. Ladder to go up and check your seams. Check them often. As wipers get older, they call this a wiper. They actually have what's called a wiper, si wiper s fluid in our store. Uh, and that keeps them nice and viable. That's what you want for the longevity of the life of those. like you've gotten the uh, step above steps really nice steps adjustable on the bottom with this cotter pin you can set it on uneven ground get you a nice level your door will pin back here and the rest of your storage looks like they left you a digital TV antenna I'm not sure where that goes up top but here's a hookup for a TV here and there's the crank for your uh, manual crank override for your slides. Right, now coming up into your unit, first and foremost I want you and everyone that's camped with you to know that the fire extinguisher is by the entry doorway. Also an entry doorway, straight ahead on the floor here is your 12 volt carbon dioxide detector. The reason I mention it's 12 volt is it's always running off your batteries. So if you're not going to be plugged in, anything keeping this from uh, running your batteries down, go ahead and use your battery disconnect, keep that from running it down. Also, access panel to your fuse box and breaker box. Looks like you got a handful of 15s down there. I'd highly recommend having fuses with you when you go camping. Come up here on the wall is just a bunch of lighting. And directly up here is your thermostat. I don't know how well you can see it with the bring the shade down here. So you turn it on here. It's on auto, which means it's just a fan. Turn the temperature to cool for for uh, AC, and there's 
the furnace. So just sort of kick on. I'll go back up and shut that off. Go back up here and turn the AC on. Have you hear that? There goes one off and the other on. I'm shut them both off now. All right, coming out into your got a couple of 12 volts and uh, 110 for a little charging station. Key hooks. Coming into your slides, you got lighting here. Your tabletop lifts up and extends. Tuck back under. I think this end is storage, yep. A lot of individual lighting. 110 here. TV stores inside. There's your remotes for them. I wanted to tell you on your fireplace, I got it running right now and I have to get the heat on because we're doing the video outdoors. And uh, instead of, if you parked at a campsite, it's a little chilly in the morning, instead of using up your gas by kicking the furnace on, go ahead and turn this electric fireplace on and it'll warm it up here in a matter of moments. Your stereo system, Bluetooth, play music indoors, outdoors, or both. Here's to extend or retract your television. I'll bring that down. And you see there's a cool little stand here that holds your remotes. Right there, a couple 110s. A lot of these shape lights here, you actually turn them on yourself on the ends. A couple speakers on this end. Right in here, your sofa, turn into a bed. More lighting over here. That's the stand for your TV if you didn't want it um, attached in there. That's the piece that goes on the bottom. More lighting that you turn on yourself. Remember, all that lighting that you turn on yourself that doesn't come on with your main lights, you want to go through and shut them off when you're closing everything up. Coming over to your fridge, your kitchen, your medic fridge, simply turn it on. Right now it's on auto. Auto means when you're hooked up to electricity, it's running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, it'll start running off your gas. Or simply lift that up, now we're running off gas. This light will come on if you need to check the gas level. Push on this little button here, and that's how these open up. Self-explanatory microwave. We have a light and fan over top of your stove. This metal piece actually makes a pretty good backsplash back there. Simply turn this to light, hit spark, and your burner's on. Put that back off. Same thing over here, pile the light on, you spark it. Turn it on over there. Come around your island. You do have these nice covers on this split island. This piece will fold down. Best to put that down before uh, travel. Up in the ceiling, you got more speakers. Over above your slide here is a smoke detector. You have another one in the living room. It's your AC unit. Fan. Down here is your vacuum system. Coming up into the hallway, you can individually bring this slide in or out from up here. Come into your bathroom. So I mentioned you do have your 110 with GFCI reset in here. And some plumbing to maintain. Keep an eye on the plumbing underneath the sink and behind the toilet. Bouncing the house down the road, you don't want things to wiggle loose. Light in here is over here. In the top here, you do have a hand manual crank open and fan, exhaust. Come back into the bedroom. Your own thermostat back here works the same way as the one up there. Your lighting. More individual lighting up there. Big closet. And this area here is already prepped should you ever do some long term camping. This is where you put your washer and dryer. Now 
under the bed drawers. Another uh, storage area and television. I just want to tell you as you're leaving the unit, you're getting ready to leave the campsite. See this door will lock down here. Close your doors. Make sure all your lights are off. Like I said, a lot of my individual lights. You'll hit your switches and see the lights still on somewhere. Your bathroom door, shower. Bring this all the way down. Put the wrong one down there. Sorry, that was a two-handed job. I'm gonna bring everything back down to this end and lock that on there for travel. Also for your slides, make sure nothing's gonna impede them from coming in or out. Shut off all the lights and then we'll run the slides in. So I wouldn't shut off all the main lights and then turn back on because I failed to on our way in show you the control panel. So this little switch up here is for your ceiling fan. These are your main ceiling lights in the living room. This is your slide room in and out. Everything will run off this one slide except the bedroom slide. You do that up there. Your awning in and out. Remember on your awning you only want to run that out until your flap falls down to 90 degrees. And your other two slides down here. Here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using potable water. Your water heater if you're using gas. Your water heater if you're using electricity. And these are all the exterior lights. Check your battery. Your fresh black and two gray tanks all are empty. Uh, when you're filling up that potable water, that's when you want to push this fresh and you can keep it on the potable water filling up. So let's go ahead and start running in some slides. First slide to the left is going to be your kitchen slide. Again, make sure that nothing is going to impede these slides from coming in. Go ahead and down there, um, take your, and close up the uh, entertainment center down there. Make sure all the doors are closed on that. So when we bring in that other slide, nothing's going to be in the way of that. I did drop this table extension on the kitchen area. Again, see how it's important to have those doors closed on the entertainment center. And your front slide is going to be this top one up here. Once you've ran all of those in, we're going to go up and run in the bedroom slide. Sorry, shut off all the lights up there. Again, shut off all your exterior lights and interior lights. Now I just crack the door a little bit. See the slide coming in. You can see through the window here. Bedroom slide slides right in. Got our unit all closed up. Now we're going to head outside and act like we're leaving the campsite. Alright, so we've got our unit all closed up. Let's show you how to work your steps. First off, there is a little cotter, cotter pin here if you need to raise or lower these if you got on even ground. First off, make sure your exterior door is wide open. Lift this up and just set it inside. Turn this handle and that'll lock them in there. Close your door. Lock and deadbolt your door. Lift and turn this handle. That'll keep that nice and tight for you. Close up everything. Go around back. Unhook your power. Unhook your water. Come around here. Open up these two low point drains right here, just take them caps off it. Let's 
thought we had another low point drain. Try to find that. No, that's your only low point drain. So go ahead and bring up your stabilizing jacks. Come back over here and hit retract. Watch that will come. All right, so we've come out, we've closed and locked our door. We're gonna come down here to this low point drain. I'm gonna pull on that. We're gonna go ahead and head around to our off camp side. The other low point drain right there. Open that up. No hot water drain, so you're just gonna go ahead and unhook your water and electricity. And come back to your docking station. Turn your power back on up here. You just hit all retract. Of course you'll use this to go ahead and raise and lower to hook your hitch up, but after your hitch is hooked up, hit all retract and that'll bring up all your stabilizing jacks. Head on up to the dump station. In your convenience pack, there's a sewage hose. Let you hook right up here onto this back dump. Come up here, pull your black handle. After your black handle's been pulled for a while and it sounds like it's no longer there, you're gonna take your water pressure regulator, you're gonna hook it up to the black tank flush. Make sure you leave your black handle open when you do this. Turn on your hose and let that run for a good five minutes. The guy behind you can wait while you're washing out your tank. Get all that nasty smell out of there. If you ran it for about five minutes, go ahead and unhook your hose, unhook the water pressure regulator, and pull your gray tank. Close that one, pull your other gray tank. Sanitarily store away your sewage hose, and head on home. Again, we thank you for your purchase from Tradewinds. Hope you enjoy this trailer for many years to come. Happy camping. Come around here to your hot water heater. Cut some water out of the lines up here and then pull your hot water heater valve. Your cover will completely off. Get up in there with a socket. Be careful because hot water will be coming out of there unless you ran it all out. Put that back together. Sorry about the view currently. There you go. Unhook our water. Close everything up and head up to the dump station. That's the dump station. You use the sewage hose that comes in your convenience pack. Hook up your sewage hose here. First thing you do is pull this right black handle here, right, the one next to the uh, low point drain. That's your sewage hose. That's gonna dump all your sewage. Once it sounds like it's no longer draining, come over here again with your pressure release valve, or excuse me, with your uh, pressure monitor. Um, go ahead and hook that up to your black tank flush. Go ahead and turn that on for about five minutes. What that's going to do is going to wash out your black tank, clean that out nice for you, get all that nastiness out of there. Go ahead and unhook your hose, come down here, close your black tank. And then you're going to pull this gray tank. That gray tank's going to be cleaner water as your sinks and showers. And then lastly, you're going to come down here the other gray tank. Sorry, I lost the handle there from the other gray tank handles right here. Pull that gray. That's going to be your clean of water. It's going to clean out your sewage hose for you. Take that sewage hose. Come right back here to the rear of the unit. Pop open your bumper. Throw that sewage hose right in there. Nice sanitary place for it. Again, we thank you for your purchase. Hope you guys enjoy this saber for many years to come. Happy camping.